Roman uh, worked in a variety of capacities. He was a bookkeeper, a uh, retail sales manager, and he became the vice president of uh, the piano factory when Theodore died. Legend has it that the house was built as a wedding present for his wife, Lucy Ann Spink. Uh, the couple had one child. I don't think we've been able to, to get the name for that. Do we know who Herman's child would have been? Probably not, right? So it, it's, it's yet another junction mystery. Okay. Uh, this is the home of George Ford. He was an action finisher at the Heinzman Piano Factory. He was a highly skilled mechanic who made sure striking the piano key produced the perfect note. Ford was, would have had a very good salary. Uh, he was employed at the firm in the late 1940s, and I'm going to read the architectural description here. It was a mix and match house in 1920s style. A four square structure. The Ford selected the hip roof with round arch dormer and the wide porch spanning the front of the house. We will now move to uh, the arguably the most famous house in the junction, Birches on uh, and, uh, Net Street, 4, 288 and Net Street, which is that way. So we're moving north and then west. Uh, at uh, the time, it was in a neighborhood that housed some of the wealthy business owners in the junction. Uh, mansions once stood where the community center and school are now. So it was very much a, uh, a windy end of West Toronto Junction. Um, yeah, does it have a historical background? Does it have a historical background? Black. 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 Sorry. Yeah, it's the home of Peter Heinz. What are you talking about? No, uh, I don't believe it does have a black. Other than that, there is no plaque. So that's the one. But that plaque is very important. I'm glad you asked me about it. Uh, did, could someone go and remind me of what the plaque says? Is that I'll go. Yes, it says it was designated on the Ontario Government Act in 1981. Part of the reason it's called Malta Park is because uh, for many years, and perhaps to this day, uh, the junction had the second largest Maltese population in the world, after Malta. And uh, whenever the president of Malta came to Canada, he would go to Ottawa to visit the Prime Minister and come here to have uh, pastices at the Malta Bake Shop. I've talked about uh, how remarkably diverse the junction was. The first mosque in Toronto was here in the junction where uh, pictured frame used to be. We're going to take a look at uh, the Moray Street Shul, uh, which again represents the remarkable diversity in this area. A lot of the work that was done here was uh, done by the, uh, the founding members of the, of the congregation. I think that's what leads into uh, the connection with the, uh, with the Heinzmans. Um, uh, the story has been told that um, uh, that several of the, the congregants here worked at the at the Heinzman factory, and they were I don't know if they were cabinet makers or not, but uh, they're reported to have built the uh, the Aaron Kodesh there that, that houses the uh, tours that we have because uh, it, it was it was done by them, and then all these spindles as you see here and up above in the balcony. Uh, they're reminding, of, uh, reminding us of the piano spindles that we've done. So I guess maybe there's some truth to the story that, um, that uh, the Heinzman's uh, factory played a, a major role in, uh, in um, the construction of the, of the synagogue.